and my family, we are obedient. We are obedient. We are obedient. We no go to Babalo. Zabasi. A key issue that has been raised about um, the OB candidature, for example, has been, uh, yes, he served as, as governor. And um, in interestingly, Mr. Igbokwe hails from the state where uh, Mr. OB governed. And the issue has been he governed for this number of years, but now he wants to run for the office of the president in the southeast there are problems security challenges in the southwest too there are also challenges and across the country what do you say or how do you defend his ability to you know deal with all this yawning security challenges and earlier on you spoke about uh, the evans example you raised an example of evans of course we all know where evans is right now he is you know serving you know you know death sentence he's been sentenced to death by two courts here in Lagos. So you, how, how do you argue for the candidature of Mr. Thank Peter Obi? Thank you very much. I, I want to first of all note the fact that my colleague here was not able to talk about co cutting cost of governance. No, he will. He will. We still have time. He will. Of course. Because we had to end. We had to take a break at the time. The only person right now that can talk about cutting the cost of governance is a man who demonstrated it. So let's not go any further. No, we will. We will. But we'll eventually get there. When it comes, when it comes to about security, look, Peter B is a former governor of Anambra State. Peter B is not the president and a commander in chief of the armed forces. So when you, when you are blaming Peter B for insecurity in the Southeast, it is a misplacement of priority. There is a commander-in-chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, and he has the veto power to ensure that the lives and properties of all Nigerians are secured. As far as Peter Obi is concerned, let me tell you something. When Peter Obi was the governor of Anambra State, he knows what I'm saying. Peter Obi addressed insecurity in Anambra State to the point that even the Inspector General of Police then, Mohammed, Say that for five good years under Peter Obi's watch, there was no single armed robbery in Anambra State. None. Not even one was recorded. How does he hope to replicate that across the country? This is how he's going to do it. In Anambra State, Peter Obi had three levels of security. He had at the state level, at the local government level, and at the community level. At the state level, Peter Obi empowered the Nigerian police force and the Nigerian military with vehicles, surveillance tools, and funded them and motivated them to go after bandits, to go after armed robbers and rapists and kidnappers. That is why the likes of Evans had to run away. He empowered the Nigerian police force to demolish any building occupied by any of these, uh, you know, you know, uh, any of these, uh, you know, armed robbers. That is what he did. And at the end of the day, not even a single criminal could thrive or survive in Anambra State. At the local government level, he also empowered local vigilantes who reported cases of armed robbery, cases of kidnapping to the police, and these people were dealt with. It was under the watch of Mr. Peter Obi in Anambra State that there was a joint, police, joint task force between the Nigerian army and the police force to ensure that they go after every criminal. It was under Peter Obi's watch that criminals had to disappear from Anambra State. Let me tell you something. Before Peter Obi came in, there was a man called Obianuju. Uh, this man, under this man's watch, Places like Upper Wake or a no-go area, you can't go in there. Because if you go in there, every property that you own will be stripped off. But when Peter B came in, under, under less than two years, Peter B was able to flush out those criminals and empower the people of Anambra State by bringing down unemployment from 51% to 13%. Let me tell you something. All the political analysts, economic analysts have said that poverty and crime work hand in hand. When you reduce poverty, when you pull people out of poverty, you definitely reduce criminality. And that is the, that is the ethos of Peter B. Peter B intends to use a three-tier level of security in Nigeria, at the federal level, at the state level, and at the local government level. And he wants to work with all the, uh, all the infrastructures that are available to ensure that he builds that trust between the people and the security agency. Let me tell you something. The reason why we are having bandits today, the reason why we are having kidnappers today, is not because there are no police force. It's not because there are no uh, uh, soldiers. It is because the people of Nigeria have lost trust in their security system.
Peter will be is that man that will build that trust because he has demonstrated credibility, he has demonstrated rule of law, and All is right. the man that can fix our security. That's it. Me and my family, we are